Hey guys, Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft. And today, I want to go over a fire kit. And I want to go over the, the basics of what I carry. And some of the reasons why I, I carry what I do. I want to let you know though, that as I'm doing this, my fire preparation starts before I leave and even leave the home. If I'm going to an area that I have no idea where I'm going, haven't ever been to that area before. Uh, I like to collect some natural tinders along the way if I can. If I'm driving down the road and I see a, a, a patch of milkweed that's been blown out, I'll stop. I'll grab some milkweed husks. I'll grab the down from them, the uh, milkweed ovum that's inside the, uh, the pod itself. Okay, you can you, When you dry that out, you can use it for tinder and it takes a coal and it, and it really really goes very quickly um, hopefully I can get to show you that in, a, in another video um, my bare bones minimum that I'll wind up taking into the woods aside from this kit here is I'll carry a, a strike force uh, on my strike force I don't like the fact that they made the cord very short so I replaced mine this way when I actually use it, I can get a good strike off of it. And I don't have to worry about maybe being like right here and then stopping right there. I get a full, full swing out of it, or strike out of it, excuse me. So that's an improvement that I actually made to it. And then I can throw it around my neck if I need to, if I need to pick it up and go. This way it's close to my body and I always have it. Also with that, I'll carry a light my fire fire steel. There's a lot of them out there. I like light my fire. Um, you can get them with handles, without handles. They do make the blanks. So, and obviously, you're going to take a knife. Right? You need to master using your knife, using the back edge of your knife with your ferro rod. Okay? That's bare bones minimum. Now, to get into what I carry, I carry a small dry bag. That's to keep everything in there nice and dry. I don't like to use plastic bags, and I'll, I'll give you the reason why I don't like to use them a lot for some of these things. If you're carrying um, natural tinders, just remember, unless you're doing a water crossing or there, the rain is imminent, leave the bag open. It creates its own environment. It gets hot and cold, hot and cold. You get condensation on the inside, and that's no good for your tinder. Just a tip. Same thing with a dry bag. In this kit, okay, this is what I carry. I'll carry a lighter. I don't care. If I can make a fire with that, I'm good to go. I'll carry a magnifying glass. The Fresnel lenses are all right, and you can use them. If I have a magnifying glass, it's a little bit better. It also works as a multi-use item. I can see things better with this than I can with a Fresnel lens. Ranger band around an Altoids fire tin. Everybody uses them, I'm no exception. This is a backup. I won't dig into this unless all my other things are exhausted. But in here, I have jute twine. I have tinder quicks. I have fat wood and dryer lint. That's what I have in there. Again, I won't break into this at all until I exhaust everything else. Keep a piece of duct tape around it. Make sure it doesn't open up and to keep any possible leaking problems in there. 
Oh, let me readjust myself here since I got a bad knee from playing hockey for a while. In this tin, okay, you notice the hole is right here. I make all my char cloth in this container. Okay. There's just a piece of duct tape over it to keep it shut. Now in here, I'll carry a wet fire cube. There's probably two of them in here actually. Flint and steel. I have jute twine that's already made into a bird's nest so they have something to go with. If my dexterity is not there, I don't want to play around trying to make a bird's nest. So I'll have one that's already made up. I have dryer lint. There you go. Actually, here's a piece of the milkweed ovum. Like I said, it grows inside the pod. It's right in the end. Okay, take these, you collect these. You can use these just as well as you could use char cloth if you're using flint and steel, or you can light them. However, they will work well. Extra jute twine. There is another wet fire cube. I have tinder quicks, which work wet or dry. I'm sorry, and there are some things that I haven't discussed yet. Good supply of char cloth. This is a newer tin. That's why you don't see anything that's built up in it because I haven't made any char cloth in it. I just use another one. This is to take out with me. Now, this is jute twine. But what I've actually done with these is I've melted down paraffin wax and I've soaked them into these little wicks. Okay, these will burn for quite a long time. The nice thing about it is it's protected from moisture. Take one of these out, unfurl it, or unravel it. Okay, fluff it up a little bit with your knife, and you can use these as well. Stick them in a bundle, and you're good to go. The tinder quicks are wax impregnated. They hold a spark well and they work and they will burn from about three to five minutes. So you want to have some very good tinder to go up with your fire. Your wet fires, okay, these are very good. You can light them, put them out, light them, put them out. These will work for quite a long time. The only reason why I don't like these is these have an expiration date to them. I've talked to the company about them. Uh, there's a little bit of air, as you can see. See the puffiness of the pillow? They call it a pillow. If you lose that air that's in there, there's no guarantee for however long that you've had that wet fire cube that it's gonna light or not. I don't really want to risk myself to that, but it is a good product. I've used it for a long time. You know, I'll continue to use it. It works just as well. So, stick these all back in here. The last thing, the last product that I have that I actually, I really, really like this product and without a doubt, it does exactly what it says it does. It's the Mini Inferno. Okay, I know um, some people don't like it for various reasons and that's your choice. But I'm going to tell you, Mini Inferno stuff, this stuff works. This stuff works. 
okay? Ah, a little sticky in there. If you take one of those, I only use a half one of these if I really absolutely need it. And you can get a fire rolling. It's amazing. It works really, really well. So, say what you want. If that doesn't have an expiration date, it works wet, works dry, and it lasts a long time. And what's really nice about the fact that it burns for a very long time is that if you have marginal tinder or uh, marginal shavings, things of that nature that need your fire to go up, that you need, this helps dry it out because of the long burn time. That's really, really what I'm concerned with. So, say what you want, I roll with it, okay? Now, this is just what I have. This is what works for me. I'm not telling everybody to go out and do everything the way that I do it. I hope not, because there is a lot of people out there that know more than I do, but this works for me. Okay, if you want to use Vaseline and cotton balls, by all means use them. If you want to use trioxane fuel that you get from the military, by all means use it. Use the uh, the Espit stove. The little Espit stoves are about this big. They fold open. Germans made those things. I rolled with that in my pack for years and years and years, and I'll probably put one back in there. You can make a fire in a canteen, you know, underneath a canteen cup. You can burn that. You can boil water. Whole thing. This is just what works for me, guys. Um, I encourage everybody to make their own kits, practice with their kits, learn preparation. Like I said, my fire prep starts before I even get out into the woods. I like to look for, for different things. Where my birch bark is, where my cedar bark is, the inner bark of basswood, you know, pine needles. Um, out here, I'm loaded with them. Okay, you can make a fire very easily with those. So, I'm trying to get back in the saddle. It's been a while. I greatly apologize to everybody that's followed my channel that I haven't um, had a chance to put one out there. I'm, in the throes of learning a new editing program. I don't know how well they're going to come out. Um, I thank everybody for their tips, um, their comments, and their views. So uh, until the next one, until I can get rolling again and, and bring you some better stuff, uh, this is Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft, and uh, take it easy.